Jared joined Jason, a husband and wife duo who enjoy riding our bikes. In this video, we're going to give you a recap of how we did at our second gravel event located in New Milford, Connecticut called the Macedonia Gravel Grinder. There are six time segments varying from flat, uphill, downhill, with some technical portions. The bike we rode was our Lauf Anywhere, our Do Anything bike. It's got the SRAM Rival electronic shifting with the XPLR drivetrain. This is the same setup we used at Farmer's Daughter, which had a lot more steeper climbs. So let's get started with the ride. Welcome to my Nutso Adventures. So this is what we do and this is what we love. It was the most ideal temperature that morning, low 80s with a nice cool breeze. As we were getting our bikes ready, a couple of guys came up to us saying they recognized us from the watching our recon ride. This guy in particular, his name was Quinn, super nice guy, and we bumped into each other a couple of times on the ride. I'm here. The first segment was on Scaticook Road, which is a relatively flat and smooth dirt road in Kent, heading toward Macedonia. It covers nearly 2.4 miles. We've ridden on this road many times, so we're very familiar with it and I expected to do well on this segment. Unfortunately, we made the mistake of not replacing the batteries in our power meters after our tour of Connecticut, and sure enough, my power meter was not working. I noticed it at the beginning of the ride, but it was too late to do anything about it at that point. So I resigned myself to the fact that I would have to go by feel while doing hard efforts on this segment race. This limitation would come into play on all of the segments, but the first segment made me realize how much I rely on my power data while doing hard efforts, and how much I missed having it at my disposal. On Scatacook, my original game plan was to hold Zone 5 VO2 max power throughout the segment, and I estimated that would get me a time of under 7 minutes. Since I could not see the actual power numbers I was producing, I held myself back a bit at the beginning of the effort because I know that riding in upper zone 5 is a fine line and I did not want to overshoot it and go anaerobic at, at the beginning and fizzle out at the end. In hindsight, I think I overpaced myself because when I had a half mile left to go, I felt like my legs still had the ability to push harder. So I turned up the power a notch and was able to finish the segment with what felt like anaerobic power. The fact that I was still able to increase my power toward the end of the effort tells me that I was not going hard enough at the beginning. I wanted to maintain a steady high power output the whole time and should have felt like I was struggling to hang on to it by the end of the effort.
ultimately my result for the Scattercook segment was, wasn't too bad, 7 minutes and 12 seconds, but I knew I could have done better than that and I was a bit disappointed. Unfortunately, I failed to record this segment on camera, so we're just going to have to watch Jason's footage. My goal here was to do at least seven minutes, as that was the current QOM prior to the event. The first thing I noticed when I started was that the Strava segment screen on my Wahoo was wildly inaccurate. It projected that I would finish this segment in 25 minutes, then the segment screen disappeared. So immediately I knew that the Strava screen is not always reliable, especially in heavy tree-covered areas. Because the screen went away, I decided to approach it blindly. As I was pedaling, I noticed my breathing was more labored and my legs were not performing at their best. I wound up finishing segment one in seven minutes and 56 seconds. You okay? After the segment ended, I eased up and ate something. Still felt off, but I really didn't think too much of it. We arrived at the first aid station to refuel and drink lots of water, thinking maybe I'm just dehydrated. Spots over here. Oh, oh, oh. Segment two is the Westwoods Road segment, which is a climb and a descent. I knew there was no way I could be competitive in the climb part of this segment as I was starting to feel like something was wrong. But I am pretty good descender, so maybe I'll play that to my advantage. On the climb, I only average 166 watts for 5 minutes and 44 seconds. Car back. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Thought it was car.
because I tried to send it on the downhill, I wound up finishing with a time of 11 minutes and 15 seconds, second place in my age group. The second segment came shortly after we rode through Macedonia State Park on Westwood 2 Road. It's about two and a half miles starting with a moderate climb and finishing with a moderate descent the kind of downhill where you can pedal most of the time because it's not too steep. Apparently I didn't learn my lesson from the first segment about overpacing because I did it even worse this time. I went at what felt like tempo going up the climb, not wanting to go too hard because I planned on ripping the descent. I ended up finishing the segment in 10 minutes and 51 seconds, which is an amount of time that I'm comfortable riding at threshold for. So I really should have been riding at least at threshold going up the climb and then try to drill it on, on the descent. I think I rode the descent pretty well, but I ended the segment kicking myself for not going harder on the climb. This was another road that we've ridden a good number of times, and I knew it well. I should have studied my previous times for the climb and, and the descent more closely before the race. That way I would have known roughly how long it might take me, and if I had a more solid goal time in mind, I could have used that to determine how hard I should be going for that duration. Perfect, perfect, yeah. Yeah. I was in a group of mega riders and we blew right past okay. all the way down to the bottom and then mega turned off and I'm like, huh, oh, where did the adventure you? go? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't off. see the sign? No, I, I went all, I just see that whole path in the ace and I don't know the ace there was a segment that I don't know if it was marked. Yep, so everyone's saying that yeah. it's yeah. not marked, it's not showing up on the GPS. Yeah. So we, we texted the people back at home base to let them know. I don't okay. know. Is it the third segment yet or no? It's the third we passed segment. It already. I think that's the one in question. Yeah, there's no, there was no signs or anything. And it didn't, come up, it didn't come up on the that's GPS. The so we let them know because from the very first people and they've been saying it. Wait, so there was a third segment that we didn't know about? <laughs> Segment 3 went rogue. We arrived at the second aid station wondering what happened and the volunteers indicated that they had other individuals inquiring about the lack of signage and how the segment never made it to their head unit, um, which was the same experience so I had. The third segment, everybody else was saying the same thing, that it didn't come up. Um, I wonder if they'll just scratch that one off. Yeah, which is a bummer because I really wanted to go for that one. You're still part of Mega, right? I think yeah. it's of course, right? Yeah, yeah I think I so. I'm pretty purple, sure. purple, like that. I know. I keep I know. saying purple, but, too, but I'm pretty sure that, that I think the rest purple. are going back. 
we we're going down in that direction. We make a left? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> What's your average speed? I feel like I've been going hard. I think it's like 13. Oh. Last time I checked. <laughs> How much climbing have we done so far? Um. I have no idea what this route looks like. Oh, you saw that too? Oh. Yeah, I think the only thing that we didn't get in a video is the last segment. Yeah, yeah. Um, the long mountain long one. Mountain, yeah, I'm not doing that. Either. I'm doing adventures. Oh, okay. okay. Skip the mountain. <laughs> yeah, I think you did the... I had no idea what the roads were like, so oh. that gave me some perspective. Well, you're not missing too much because the, the long mountain climb, I, I kind of like it, but then right after that, there's like kind of a sketch. Oh, helmet. You okay? Yeah. Can I get up there? Whoa. The fourth segment was the Jeep Road Climb. This was one and a half miles with an average grade of 4.4%. The start of the ride was a little rough, then it turned into a pretty decent terrain to ride on, which I mistakenly informed Jason that it wasn't too bad. It's not bad, right? I had no goal time for this segment as my goal was just to survive it. Therefore, the lack of power meter didn't make a difference to me on this segment because I wouldn't be focusing on my power anyway. It wasn't the type of climb where you can just put your head down and pedal hard. Unfortunately, as I kept pedaling, the terrain got a bit more technical, especially on the climb. It was hard to find a good line as I was trying to avoid the sandy and rocky sections. Needless to say, I was zigzagging my way up the road. I had to pay close attention to the lines I was taking, so I focused more on that technical aspect of the segment and I told myself to just keep moving my legs to avoid losing my balance if I happened to ride over a small rock. At one point I found myself riding on the grassy section as that seemed to be the least bumpy. pleased with how I handled the Jeep road. I did get off the bike twice when I came up on sections that appeared too technical to ride at first glance, but as I walked through those sections I realized I could have ridden them only if I hadn't chickened out. There was a fork in the road in which I didn't see the arrow signs anywhere. I slowed down to change to the navigation screen on my Wahoo to make sure I was still going in the right direction. When I slowed down, Jason was able to catch up to me and rode ahead. I wasn't disappointed in myself though. Riding technical terrain is not my strength, 
and I happily survived the segment unscathed. My time was 12 minutes and 47 seconds. I have no idea if that's good or bad, and it almost doesn't matter to me because my goal here was just to survive it. I finished segment 4 in 14 minutes and 24 seconds. This segment turned out to be quite the challenge for me that day as I was having to ride over rocky and sandy terrain required extra power that I knew I didn't have both in my legs and my lungs. Oh, they have it clearly marked this time. The fifth segment was on Modley Road, a 2.2 mile stretch of rolling dirt that isn't completely smooth, but is overall in good condition. The power meter would have been useful here because the segment consists of short climbs and short downhills, neither of which are, are steep. Yeah which means I could pedal pretty much the whole time, but had to shift gears constantly if I wanted to maintain a steady power level. It was a little difficult to gauge my power output by feel here. Similar to the Westwood segment, we've ridden Modley several times and I should have taken a closer look at my previous times prior to the event. I think I have enough, do you? I ended up completing Modley Road in 9 minutes and 9 seconds. I'm estimating that my power was in the low threshold zone on average, and I should have been doing upper threshold or low zone 5. Oh well, lessons learned for next time. The fifth segment was the Modley Road segment. This was rolling terrain with slightly looser rocks. Yeah, they've had it before. Two minutes in, I was already huffing and puffing. We passed a rider getting some extra water from a nearby home, and I thought at the time that I didn't need the water. And if I had stopped, that would add an additional time to my segment. Slowly I lost Jason, but soon I started to feel better mentally. This was because I didn't feel like chasing anymore, and without Jason in the front, I can really focus on me.
I finished segment five in 10 minutes and 37 seconds. The final segment was in New Milford, near the end of the route. It started on Mud Pond Road and finished on Long Mountain Road. Both are dirt roads that are moderately smooth with a few bumps along the way. Okay. Mud Pond is mostly flat with a few gentle turns and Long Mountain is a climb of 0.7 miles with 9% average grade. Not super steep, but steep enough when you're riding on dirt. Since this was the last segment, my plan was to empty the tank on it. I started off by riding at what felt like low threshold on Mud Pond Road, with the idea of going kind of hard but keeping enough gas in the tank to make a strong final push on the long mountain climb. I finished the mud pond portion in a little over four minutes, then turned up left onto Long Mountain and started to stomp on the pedals. Since I had been overpacing myself all day, I felt like I still had a good amount of high-end power as I worked my way up the climb. I passed a few guys on the way up, and one of them cheered me on, which gave me a bit of extra motivation.
couple of the guys who I had passed on the climb rode up behind me and complimented me. I felt really good about my effort, not just because I earned respect from other riders, but because I knew I gave it all I had. My time ended up being 10 minutes and 4 seconds, but the time itself didn't matter that much to me. What mattered was that I finished the final segment on a good note. Oh, shit. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Huh. I knew at this point I no longer had the legs and the lungs to tackle this section, but I gave whatever I got on the flats. I have low battery, okay? Just wait for me at the end of the segment. When the road pitched upwards, I had two choices, walk it or ride it. I saw a woman up ahead, which made me think I could probably ride up to her only to be reminded that my legs fell off. At this point, I decided all I can do was 140 watts, and as long as the terrain didn't do anything crazy, I could probably make it up at an abysmal time. I finished segment six in 14 minutes and nine seconds. My PR for this segment was 12 minutes and 58 seconds at an average power of 143 watts, including the flat section. While in this ride, my average power was a mere 132 watts. Oh, and the PR, that was on our recon ride back in June, which we did most of the route minus the Jeep road. Did not PR that at all. All right. You want to go first, or? Well, at least we have a finish line this time. Thanks for your help, man. No problem. Our next event is the Kinetic Care Grand Fondo, which be, will be the first event we do on our road bikes. Then in October, I will be doing the Lime Rock Epic by myself, as Jason will be working. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Until next time, don't forget to enjoy the ride.